Welcome to My GP Cloud. I'm Steve and I want to show you a little bit about inventory. We'll be looking at units of measure, setting up inventory sites, item class setup, and items. Let's take a look at the inventory control system in Dynamics GP. The inventory control system allows you to track inventoried items and also store non-inventoried items. The first thing I want to do is set up three items. I'm going to set up a unit of measure schedule, I'm going to set up a site, and I'm going to set up a class ID. Let's take a look at that. To set up a unit of measure schedule, I can go to Microsoft Dynamics GP here, go to Tools, Setup, Inventory, and Unit Measure Schedule. Now I've got several set up. Let's take a look at this one here. This screen allows me to define a unit of measure schedule. A unit of measure schedule has a base unit of measure here. It also specifies the decimal places for the quantity. It also has an area to list equivalencies. So in this particular example, my base unit of measure is each. This is a unit of measure that the system uses at a core level to track inventory. A very important part of this is the quantity decimal place. I can have from 0 to 5 in my unit measure schedule. When I apply this unit measure schedule to a particular item, that item will have the same quantity decimal places. This is very important. I can also list equivalencies here. The first one is the identity equivalence. I have a 1 each equals 1 each. I can also add to that, for example, I've got case equals 10 eaches. You can set up as many unit of measure schedules as you wish to. It's going to re really easily simplify the way that you purchase items, the way that you report on items, and the way that you sell items. Next, let's take a look at the site ID. To access that, I'm going to go to Cards, Inventory, and Site. I've got several set up, but let's take a look at the warehouse site. The site ID is basically just an identifier of a location in your organization. This can be a physical location or it could be a logical location. And really all it does is it sets up a site ID. This is the area that I'm going to track inventory. I can make transactions to this site, make transactions from this site. The site will, the site will store the actual cost or the standard cost of that particular item. When you do an inventory valuation, it'll do it on a site by item basis. So just set up, set up at least one site here. You can use this within your purchase order system and your sales system. The third thing I want to set up is the class ID. Now I think it's important to do this, so I'm going to go to Tools, Setup, Inventory, and Item Classes. And the reason I like Item Classes is it makes reporting easier because I can do my reporting based on a certain selection of items. Also, when I add new items, it makes it a lot easier to add those items. So let's take a look at some of the class IDs I have. This is one I use quite a bit. What I like about it here is I've got all the default values for various fields within the system. You can see that I have a unit measure schedule defined. And one thing that you want to do is make sure that you've got the maintain history. These four options are marked as they are here. And then if you're Create a new class ID for the first time in your system. Mark it as default. This will make it easier to add additional class IDs in the future because it will bring in some of the defaults from your first class ID. Also an important part of the class ID are the accounts. I've got accounts associated with various types of transactions within my system. All right, I've got those three basic things set up. Now let's add an item into the item master file. So we go to Cards, Inventory, and Item. And what I would need to do here is I can add or edit existing items. Let's take a look at an existing item. This is an existing item here. and You can see from my screen the only required fields are the item number, the description, and the unit of measure schedule. This unit of measure schedule is set up for an each. It's got zero decimal quantities. And you can see that that's reflected on the item level as well. Here I can add information about this particular item. There's different types of items. You can see those listed here. The sales inventory is the basic stock keeping unit. These three at the bottom are merely 
miscellaneous charges. They won't actually track quantities. And then there's also an information button. If I click on this here, this brings up additional information you can add to your system about a particular item. Let's go to the options screen here. And here I've got additional information about this particular item. Specifically, I, in the system I've got six user-defined fields that I can use to add additional information about a particular item. In my system I have three of those defined. I have three additional ones I could use if I wanted to. Next, let's take a look at the price list. The price list can be accessed through the item master file here. If I go to the go to button, go to the price list, it'll bring up this list here. And you can see there's different pricing methods avail available to me in the inventory system. A currency amount is just a flat dollar amount, and you can see the other options available here. For, for this particular item, I'm using the markup on the current cost. This is merely going to mark up that item based on the current cost in the system, and you can see the price list resulting here. Now, in this particular price list, I'm using multiple price levels. Price levels can be assigned to a particular customer or a group of customers. It just allows you to segment your pricing based on a customer or a group of customers. It's a user-defined value. You can easily add to your price list. You can see I've got two here. I've got a price level of extens extended and also retail. I can also include multi-currency pricing in my prices if I need to do that. So this is a quick look at the inventory control system. You want to make sure that you set up at least one unit of measure schedule, a site ID, and a class ID. This will make it a lot easier to add new items in. And when you add the items, make sure that you look at all the options. There are several there. You can add your prices, prices in as well. In the next video, we'll be looking at purchase orders. And for more information, please follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash mygpcloud.